Welcome to my two-part series of how to get the perfect finish on your interior walls. In this part, I'm gonna be talking about the product I use to get the perfect finish. Now I'm also gonna be talking about the prep process to getting the perfect finish. In part two, I'm gonna be talking about some tips and tricks on the application process, but let's get start painting these walls so you can see an amazing finish. So today I'm gonna to be using a product from Bear. This is Bear Dynasty right here. I recently tested Bear and I've actually used this color before I tested it because it claimed to be a one coat high paint and it truly was a one coat high paint and I actually really like the product. When it comes to getting a perfect finish on your interior walls, choosing the right paint matters a lot. If you choose the wrong paint, you choose cheap paints, you're not gonna get a really good finish. You really get what you pay for when choosing your paints. So Bear Dynasty, I've just used it a few times in the past and I really liked it, so I'm gonna be using it again here. I think the having a really amazing looking finish is also dependent on the sheen you choose too. High gloss paints, semi-gloss paints, satin paints have a tendency to have a lot of glare in certain lighting and they don't show true color. So I like finishes, like matte finishes, especially when it comes to dark colors like this color we're gonna be using today. It's um, a color called City Rain. A matte finish is gonna give you an amazing looking finish when it's all dried and done. All right, now I'm gonna be talking about the prep process. One of the things when it comes to getting an amazing looking finish, what I call the perfect finish on your pure walls. You got to inspect your walls for any blemishes that you want to take care of before you paint. This is a one coat paint. Sometimes uh, if we're using a two coat paint, a three coat paint, you know, your first coat, you'll see some blemishes. You'll go back, fix those, and then apply your second coat, and you don't have to worry about it initially. But this is a one coat paint, so we want to make sure these walls are in perfect condition before we start painting. I like to use just a lint scraper. I'm gonna look down my walls. I want a room that's got good lighting. If I don't have any lighting, I'm gonna set up some lights so some lighting so I can see any imperfections. If I see anything sticking up, any what we call like peaks or mountains, I'm gonna use it my lint bite scraper just to scrape those off. Those things will show up, you know, on your wall and it's kind of um, some blemishes in the texture and it's been painted multiple times. Nobody's ever scra scraped them off before. I'm gonna scrape these things off. I'm gonna also be looking for any holes in the walls where there's been pictures hanging or anything and then I'm going to spackle those. I use Crawford's vinyl spackling if I'm gonna be doing any spackling. I'm gonna inspect them. Just make sure there's nothing on these walls. Scrape it off, look at it really close, really good. If you look down this wall, you can see anything sticking up. And I'm just gonna do this with each and every wall before I begin painting. Let me begin masking my floors. I always mask my floors off with one inch tape, nine inch paper. Usually always use on my paper, I use Frog Tape Production Tape. This is their um, Frog Tape's orange production tape. Uh, it's you know contract of tape that comes in multi-packs. I got a hardwood floor, an engineered wood floor right here when I'm masking on floors. I always use frog tape yellow and I typically use an inch and a half tape that gives me a lot of room to run my nine inch paper. So you can actually put your um, say frog tape yellow one inch onto your, uh, attach your taper tape and mask but it's hard to be as precise when you're using a mask masker to manipulate and install your tape. On my floors, I just like using a roll of tape. That way I can be very precise. Then I go over it with my nine inch paper and one inch tape. And if you're masking on carpet, you can just use your production tape, go right on carpet. But any type of wood flooring, any type of flooring that has any type of finish on it, you definitely want to use frog tape yellow. Um, if you're using, on, if you're on the say vinyl floor um, or tile, you can use frog tape green. All right, so I'm gonna start getting ready to do the masking and here's one of the things you definitely do wanna do and you want to dust your baseboards, you wanna dust your floor before you do any type of masking and do any vacuuming. I always keep myself a um, little shop vac because the battery operated shop vac to mask and vacuum. If you don't, your tape is gonna be not sticking very good because of dust. Uh, the, t the dust and debris could cause your tape to not get a good seal and you can get paint bleeding underneath your tape on your floor. So I'm gonna begin masking. I did a lot of scraping and stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and vacuum first and then I'll dust with my duster brush.
have noticed there's some speckles of paint from uh, previous painters down here before um, we end up completing this job. We're just going to take some crocodile cloths and clean that off. A lot of it will probably scrape off with just you know my um, two-edged knife, but we'll carefully scrape it off and clean it with a crocodile cloth. So but again, masking here, and I'm just going to be masking with tape. Just going to get this tape really up close to my trim as close as I can, and then I'm gonna tuck it with my two-edged knife. So I'm gonna get that up against the trim. We're gonna be coming around. I'm not painting the corner, the, this, I'm not painting this part of the wall, but I do wanna get masking over here because we don't wanna get any grips or splatters on this part of the wall either. The corners, I wanna tuck masking underneath those corners. Don't wanna get anything underneath there. What I like to do, once I get my masking down, I'm gonna take my five and one, I'm gonna lightly run it along the edge, get a really good seal on that tape. Then I'm gonna tuck it in my corners, gonna cut it with a knife, make sure you have a sharp blade on your knife. Cut that. That way you can get a nice, good, clean, corner and mask that and then I'm gonna continue moving on. So one of the interesting things about this job is is the trim is currently white. We're gonna be painting the trim, ceiling and walls all the dark color. So I'm going to be painting the trim with the same product I'm using on the walls. It's gonna be a matte finish. The customer wants this entire room to be matte and the dark color all the way around the room. So I'm gonna continue masking here. Try to get that, if there's any gap underneath your trim and the hardwood floor, try to get your tape tucked underneath there. I like to pull about 12 to 18 inches of tape, stretch it, just get it up underneath, get it up against, get it up against this cord around, like probably like a 16th of an inch. Touching it down, I'll eventually Press it down with my two-edge knife. If you get any spots that um, get kinked or anything, just take and touch it up with a piece of tape. I'm gonna tuck my corner lightly. I'm just gonna run two-edge knife. We barely have to just run it down to get it to tuck and to actually get it to press and seal. I like running it on the rounded or the beveled edge of my two inch knife. Just tucking it down. You don't want it touching the white because if you peel off this tape, if it's touching the white anywhere, you're going to see white because this color is really dark and you'll just see you know, whatever you got onto the white when you uh, pull that tape off. So make sure no white is exposed. Get back, trim my corner. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp when you're trimming your tape. If your knife is dull at all, it'd be really hard to trim your tape in nice 90 degree corners. All right, I got my inch and a half tape put down. Now I'm gonna begin just running my nine inch paper. Now one of the key things about this nine inch paper uh, when, it run, when it comes to your hardwood floors, you don't want this tape, the adhesive to be touching your floor because you could pull off the finish of your floor. That's why I use uh, inch tape so I have a lot of room to play. Just gonna get about a quarter from the trim. Gonna run this all the way around. But when you're doing walls, you know, just to be 100% sure, always just run like a runner over your paper. That way if any splatter, you know, goes farther out than your paper, it's gonna be on your drop cloth. All right, so now I'm gonna be masking off any light switches and um, sockets. So one of the things 
I do like to use is soft blockers. It's an easy way to mask off switches and plates and they are reusable. They have an adhesive on them. They just come on and off and you definitely want to mask these off. I've got a uh, socket over here. Uh, previous painters didn't mask off and they got paint all over it. If you don't have the availability to get socket blockers, you can also just mask it off just with tape. And what we do is we use an inch and a half tape to mask off our switches and plates. So we can just take a piece of tape, put it over the top. And of course, you know, you don't have to go to this extent if you're really careful rolling, but it's better safe than sorry if you accidentally just roll over this uh, switch right here. You're gonna get paint down inside the switch. It's gonna cause the switch not to function properly. So it's always best practice, professional practice, to cover your plates. And the socket blockers actually work if you're spraying or rolling. They're an excellent little device to use. And once again, they are reusable too.